Um, it is my great pleasure to invite, uh, to present uh, Luis Lam, who will be giving a title entitled, uh, talk entitled Learning and Reasoning in Neurosymbolic AI. Luis Lam is a professor of computer science and AI at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul um, in Brazil. He holds a PhD from Imperial College London and is currently at the MIT Sloan Fellows MBA program, class of 2023. Lam has been an AI innovation and technology researcher for over 20 years. He has been a pioneer of neurosymbolic AI research, having co-authored a seminal book in the field and spoken widely about the perspectives of AI and innovation in academia, industry, and government. Lam was Vice President for Research at UFRGS University, Dean and Vice Dean of the Institute of Informatics. Lam has co-led the Alliance for Innovation between the state capital's three largest universities, UFRGS, PUCRS, and Unicinos, in the 1.5 million Porto Alegre city, and managed a successful strategy for innovation ecosystem implementation in the state's capital. He was then invited to create a new State Department for Innovation Science and Technology. As State Secretary, he led a large-scale innovation science and technology strategy in the 11.5 million people state of Rio Grande do Sul for the period 2019-2022. The policy supported and funded uh, regional innovation ecosystem projects across the city of the state territory. As a result, the state was ranked first in innovation by an independent study by the Center for Public Leadership this year. Luis, thank you very much for, for accepting our invitation. I uh, give the floor to you. Thank you, Gerardo. Thank you, everyone. It's a huge pleasure to be together with you. I'm going to share the, the content now. Okay. 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 I hope you can all see. Okay. Yes, perfectly. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to be here or actually to be online, but uh, I wish I was there in Buenos Aires. So, um, so yes, we are going to speak about learning and reasoning in neurosymbolic AI and this field um, has been active for quite some time. We had, uh, let's say, a small number of people connected to the field and interested in the field. But over the last year, some companies have shown interest. And uh, some people also realized that um, in addition to deep learning, in addition to the power of gathering, the power of dealing, managing data, um, in AI and in computer science in general, the problem of reasoning upon data in building machines that could actually um, represent in a better way the way we process knowledge, we represent knowledge, and we make draw inferences from knowledge was also an important problem so um, i'm saying that uh, what we need is a better integration between schools of thought some schools think that well, okay machine learning is a wonderful tool for several tasks but uh, of course you have to be aware that there are other tools other techniques and methodologies in reasoning knowledge representation in inference in logics and in techniques associated to knowledge representation in a way that we can better uh, draw inferences from data. So this is the, the, the key issue that we try and uh, work in this uh, school of thought. And I just pay homage to some of the very famous uh, painters in the Vatican, which is the school of Athens, because we are living through an era where knowledge and uh, reasoning and of course uh, the intellectual activity is becoming more and more important in the economics. So um, um, just a bit of uh, the summary of uh, our talk, we are going to talk a little bit about the different schools of AI, mainly symbolism and connectionism. And uh, we try to, to show that it's possible to integrate learning and reasoning uh, given certain conditions. And this is done by a, a methodology called neurosymbolic AI, as I mentioned, has been active for uh, some decades. And I also draw some uh, parallels and some, uh, I bring some work that uh, points out what's the difference, uh, not only between those three schools, but also in terms of uh, what kind of future research and future avenues that we can uh, pursue in this field. So I, I would like to, of course, to thank a lot of many collaborators over the years, and much of this work is inspired in a paper that I wrote with uh, Arthur Garces from City University in London. Um, in the end of 2020, and we've been updating this paper from time to time. So 
Um, recently, actually, in October, there was, there was an issue of communications of the ACM. Uh, there was a report uh, written by uh, Don Morrow on uh, what's actually going on in AI. So for those interested in neurosymbolic AI, how uh, the combination of neural networks and symbolic representations um, can make uh, AI systems more transparent, more reliable, uh, more explainable, and um, in a way that we develop systems that are, in the end of the day, more robust. So there is a, this article that's also a very easy uh, read, a nice introduction to the field, and uh, it points out also some directions that are going on at the moment. Um, there is also other interesting connections with other fields of um, AI and of knowledge representation and also of uh, science in general. For instance, Pierre Lévy is developing a language with knowledge, and he pointed out that uh, perhaps the best way to... The, the, que the question that we're trying to answer here is that... Um, from the very early age in AI, what we wanted to do was to represent and to, to analyze the question if machines in the end of the day can think or not. So, okay. so the big question in AI has always been uh, if machines can or cannot think. Even Turing, from one of his first papers, he posed this question, can we answer if machines can or cannot think? And uh, when you think in terms of reasoning, in terms of learning, they are very uh, they're the two most uh, outstanding cognitive abilities. So machine learning and uh, knowledge representation and reasoning have been two schools of thought in AI. And uh, and the, po the power of neurosymbolic AI is exactly what we are trying to build here. Can we harness the power of logic and learning so that they can build more robust AI systems? So in, very, in the very early history of, uh, let's say, computer science, computer science, already we had people like John von Neumann uh, that realized that uh, there, are a, there was a connection between artificial neural networks and logical reasoning. And von Neumann even defended the point that perhaps the best logic to represent reasoning in artificial neural networks was intuitionistic logics, because in intuitionistic logics, uh, you can associate the better, uh, better the difference that there is uh, between, let's say, ordinary logic, that's classical logic, and the logic of project of, of uh, constructive procedures, the logic of proofs in computer science, the logic of algorithms, where you have a, a better relation with the constructive processes that are represented via intuitionistic logics. So the relation between logic and neural networks was perceived uh, very early in computer science, but, but for some reason, uh, this particular uh, difference, this particular uh, observation was not pursued in terms of research, okay? So also another interesting observation that we can do from very early on in computer science is that Stephen Kleen, one of the, the foremost uh, computer scientists, he created regular expressions to express or to represent Macaulay and Pete's uh, artificial neural networks. And already in the 40s, early 50s, people realized, of course, that we could try and represent uh, the processes that go on in the human brain. Of course, the abstractions that were created by Macaulay and Pete's, they were not perfect representations of how um, biological neurons work, but they were one of the first efforts towards building uh, richer representations of the process that we have in our brains, the process that we have in cognitive and cognition.